This is Mud Dog from Black Swan Tactical. Uh, the next video from the Southeast Virginia Nap In and Ancestral Skills Weekend is Feather. He's a American Mountain Man Association, and he's talking about the American Mountain Man Association. He's a true mountain man. Uh, he's a really funny guy too. I hope you enjoy the video. Two years. Some of them are mandatory. You live <laughs> off the land for three days. You can't even take salt and pepper with you. You are allowed to take water or a water purification system because you can't go drink out of these creeks anymore. Other than that, that's the only thing you're allowed to take. So you're going to eat whatever's good during hunting season. You can shoot a squirrel. I did mine by a river, so I was catching fish. But you got 10 requirements. You got to make your own clothes, all handmade. You gotta have uh, your three day live off the land. You have to camp in every season of the year. Uh, you have to attend a major event like our Eastern Primitive uh, that's coming up in, in September. You have to be there for seven days. So they'll know who you are, get acclimated. And these guys aren't easy on you. One of our requirements is making a fire with flint and steel under any conditions. Like when it rained a while ago, if our brigade leader is sitting here, he'll say, Feather, go start a fire. I gotta go out there and hunker down and make a fire. Pour down rain. Don't make any difference. Because if you can't do it and you say you've done it, you're lying to us. Now we have our possible bags. Let me get mine here real quick. It's not really full right now, but most times everything I need to go on a five day trek will be in this bag. Fire starting kit, knife, everything that we need. So if somebody says, what, what's that bag? It's a possible bag. They'll say, well, what's said? Ask me, do I have a little tomahawk in there? Ask me. Do you have a little tunnel? It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what, that, and like I say, you have to do these 10 requirements within two years. If you go a, a two years and one day, you start over. But this stuff is, I mean, and our brigade leader, he won't cut you no slack. If you don't do it, you don't get it. You don't check that thing off. I've done my 10. He's done his 10. We both have our numbers now. We're, we're called boss loafers. So once you get an AMM number, mine's 1945. Nobody will ever have that number. Right now, there's 600 of us registered in the world. We have three guys in Finland and one guy in Australia who's done his requirements. But once you say you've done it, he will never question you. He will never look in your journal. You should keep a track of everything that you do that has to do with the AMM. Like I can write in my journal that I came out today to demonstrate. And you can go back in your journal for like 15 years. You can remember where you were. Who, what, when, where, and whether. <laughs> and it's, it's part of what we do. Um, trapping, um, hunting, fishing. Um, I teach Native American sign. He's passed his requirement with Native American sign. I'm crazy. <laughs> and you never point at somebody with your finger. It's always with your thumb. This is kind of a sign of disrespect. And... Uh, for the long hair, you're female. I'm white man because of the wide brim hat that we wear. <laughs> Native Americans didn't wear anything this silly. <laughs> but that's a sign for white men, this. And uh, there's, only two, there's only two colors in sign language, black and red. So, You see how many black feet past month. So this is past, this is future. If you want to ask a question, you put your hand up like this and say, question. And then you'll say, this is a sign from moccasin or foot, black foot. So that's something that we do at some rendezvous is you're only speaking sign. like. You hungry? Always. <laughs> <laughs> you I know that one. You thirsty? 
I taught uh, three little girls up at Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 10 signs. I'll show them to you real quick. Me, you, go, fish, trap, beaver, trade, white man. Daddy, Daddy. I saw those little girls three years later. The only sign they forgot was horse after three years. What do we have for breakfast? I can't remember. <laughs> But it's amazing. But that's what we do. We're we're hunters, trappers, and we do it primitive. What you see here is a Taj Mahal for us. Because most times it's just a diamond fly on a pack basket. And if we're going to have a rendezvous here, if we started on Friday, say at six o'clock, you're allowed to drive your meal in from the highway, with your vehicle, come in, drop your goods, and then drive your mule back out. If you get here at six oh one out there, you pack in. And you, if you want to leave early, you pack out. You don't bring a vehicle into camp during the rendezvous, period. Except in an emergency. Somebody gets hurt, you've got to get an ambulance or get a out or something. But that's what we do, and I've been lucky enough to travel across the U.S. to several of them. And it's, it's, a, it's a good group. The, the, the knowledge these guys have is beyond belief. We have master trappers, master gunsmiths. We have guys who make the barrels for their rifle. They make the locks. They make everything. Keep the shield. Um, I was lucky. We were lucky enough to get one of his books that he signed. He made a rifle for a guy a few years ago, a gun collector. He went around the world to find the proper gun collector, the proper gun maker. You know what a Jaeger is? A German, it's a short, heavy barrel. Brass barrel inlaid with gold and silver. It went for $90,000. And the guy says it won't have to shoot. And he says if I build it, it will shoot. And he'll do he'll do seminars on how to tune your lock, and you won't believe how quick those locks in the lock. He'll go off just as fast as the percussion cap. But that's what we do, and we're we have provenance. Now the stuff you see out here ain't right. This is nowhere near right. This is good, this is good, that's good, that's not. Uh, when we go to camp. We're having one this weekend up in, uh, in uh, the western part of the state. And you could be sitting around with 20 guys, and all one man has to say is, dump them. And you dump your bag on the ground. We found one guy that had a big lighter and chewing gum with aluminum for him. He was not felt much of because he shouldn't have that in camp. Our bottles could all be corked. They didn't have screw caps until right around the what, Civil War. So everything that we have in camp will have cork bottles. When we did our five-day trek, living off the <laughs> took everything on our back for five days. My brandy bottle got lighter every night, but my water <laughs> bottle was still heavy. Everything is wrapped in parchment paper. Even my medicine was in a cork bottle. No screw caps. So we, we do it the primitive way, and we have a website, uh, www.mtnmen.org, and if you want to look it up, just go to Mount Men and search, and it'll come up with the original site. It'll give you terminology of the words that we use. Like somebody would hand you this, you'd say, oh, isn't that pretty? Uh-uh. That's shiny. That's what they would say. That, that's shiny. So there's a glossary of terms about what goes on, but um, I myself, when I go, I don't even use paraffin candles. I use beeswax candles. They didn't have paraffin before 1840. The fur trade started in the east. Albany was a major fur trade center. When they trapped that area out, they started moving west, west and west, until they got to the Rockies. When they first trapped the Rockies, they would put their clues when you get a beaver pelt, it's called a blue. They would fold them in half and pack them, just compress them, put them on the mules, and take them from the Rocky Mountains all the way to St. Louis to sell them. Until the fur traders finally started the companies, fur companies. The first um, rendezvous was in 1825 in southwest Wyoming, right in that corner down here. That was in 1825. Jim Bridger was a one-day fur trade. The last one was in 1840 because the, the silk hats came in. And the, fur, the beaver hats went out because they were lighter and shinier. So the beaver pelts just died. You couldn't sell them for anything. There's a good movie called The Mountain Men. If you watch that movie, 
it'll explain what happened to her. And that's a good movie. They show what a rendezvous was really like. It wasn't like this. <laughs> it was hell on wheels. <laughs> so that's that's what we do. And we keep a track of what we do, where we go, who we know. And if you have a, if you want to learn something, he'll show you what dog bane is. Do y'all know what y'all? Most of y'all know what dog bane is. My uh, my little neck knife somewhere here. I just lost it again. Anyway, the strap for that is made out of dog bane, and I've got to make a new one. What do you do with your knife, man? <laughs> there it is. That's dog bane. Tensile strength on this is right around 100 pounds. Just on that little piece right there. If you can make a rope that big around, you can pick up a truck. But this is it. It's just that little piece of mess right there. And y'all, most of y'all have seen what dog bane is. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if not, you'll you'll demonstrate if you want to make yourself a piece of strength. Uh, we have a guy up in Connecticut that makes these for us. It's got the AMM logo. It's also got magnets in it because before I put the magnets in there, I'd wake up in the morning and be laying under my hip or something. I'm lucky I didn't get cut. But that's what we do. We're, we're the we're the hard asses, but not by what you see here. Because most times it'll be a piece of this. You know what a diamond fly is? You just pull up one end, tie it to a tree, and you got a shelter. Um, everything goes in your pack basket, and we do have some that are. I mean, they're dyed in the wool. Like, I've never used a match to start a fire. It's always been flint and steel. Um, if I'm going to light anything, I'll flint and steel, light a candle. And then I'll go from there. Some guys are using matches, <laughs> but I don't. I, I flint and steel completely. This is open to females? Absolutely. As associate members, the only way you can become an American mountain man is to be a man. And it's, it's an association of brothers, but ladies are most welcome, most welcome. Because if it wasn't for the ladies, they wouldn't have had a lot of the leather done. Um, and that's something else that we do. When we tan, this is brain tan. Um, have y'all ever seen brain tan? You know what brain tan is? Yeah, I do. This is sold by the square inch, not by the square foot. Feel how soft that is. <laughs> Anybody? It's like velvet. Yeah. If you take the brain of the animal, it takes about three days for the time you you uh, cut all the fat off the, off the fur, put it on the rack, scrape the, uh, the fur off with a piece of, to do it properly, use a piece of flint if you're going to do it right. Then it takes about three days of soaking, stretching. Uh, when you get to the point where it's almost done, a lot of people will use an axe head. They'll put it in a vise, and they'll break, they'll break the leather over the axe head to break the fibers up to make it soft. <coughs> and then they'll soak it in the brain, then let it dry. By the time you get done, it's just like a piece of velvet. But when you go to buy brain tan, a deer hide this like this, by this will be like 125 to 150 dollars. And the elk skin, like my like my leathers are made out of. That's sold by the square foot, maybe four dollars a square foot, but this is sold by the square inch because it, it just it's so labor intensive to, to do one. But that's what we do. We're we're the um, we're the the bad guys. <laughs> no, we're just very primitive, especially when we go to one of our events. Um, uh, the the honor system is amazing. And we have guys that can, they, they, they astound me when I get around them, the knowledge they have. And I'm still learning. And I would like to see, we're trying to, we'll, our new brigade Bushway, I think, will probably take place next year. And he will probably have some rendezvous where we only speak inside. So I would like to see that. It's like a foreign language. If you don't use it, you lose it. Any questions? How long did you do it? I've been in the woods most all of my life. <laughs> Since I was like this, take it out, rabbit traps. When did you become the primer? About 15 years ago. But I've been rendezvousing for a long time. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep on doing this until I go up. That's a sign for dying. So, and we do have, uh, we've lost one associate member this year, Lou Donahoe. Um, sad time. At Surrey, just above Smithfield, where I run to do. Where he's and I hope you enjoyed the video. The link to the Mountain Man Association will be in the down in the description below. And again, stay safe, gabba gabba hey, see you later.